Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this iRace for Belgium special event on Racebot TV, streaming live also on iRacing Live. Now, as you almost all are certainly aware, 36 hours ago, Belgium was rocked with two separate terrorist attacks. One at Brussels Airport, which has killed at least 11 people, while 20 died in an explosion at Melbeek Metro Station. It's not our job as commentators to talk about the whys, the whys not. Our job as commentators is to do our job and commentate on events. Racing is a community. Racing has always been a community. We are all fans of different things, but racing is a bond which so often joins people of all different nationalities and all different cultures together. So that is what we're going to do here tonight. We are at Turkey's Bar Frankershamps one of the two major racetracks in Belgium as we're going to go racing here today for 45 minutes in the GT1 cars, the Corvette and the Aston Martin. Tonight, we, the sim racers, race with Belgium and tonight, we let racing do the talking. Welcome to Racebot TV. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this I Race with Belgium special event on Racebot TV, streaming live on iRacing Live. And as I just said, tonight we will let the racing do the talking. There are iRacers here, over 50 of them participating in their event, showing their support and their solidarity of the people of Belgium, and also, of course, with the many iRacers that make up club Benelux, Belgium and Luxembourg. Tonight, they're going to go racing for 45 minutes around traditional Cirque Spa Francochamps. Track temperature there, 69 degrees. Race humidity is going to be 53%. We've got ourselves partially cloudy skies and it's a beautiful evening for racing here. Wind speeds of about 5 kilometers an hour. Jimmy, this track is known and regarded as one of the meccas of motorsport this is a fantastic racetrack this is really one of the top four racing venues in the world you can put it along the likes of indianapolis along the likes of monaco and Le Mans. it's spa we love spa we do and good evening to everyone watching and spa fragment chamber is one of those real driver's circus everyone knows it everyone who uh, is worth their salt in racing or simulator racing anything knows that Spa is one of the uh, the premier racetracks of the world, one of those real jewels in the crowns of any sort of uh, any sort of racing calendar and it you know, it's a fantastic place to go racing and we're going to get treated with 45 minutes worth of GT1 action so Indeed so, we are getting ourselves now towards the end of practice, we've got ourselves 
drivers from all forms of motorsports here. From all different clubs. We've got a couple of drivers from the iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series who are running in this event as well. Some drivers that cut their teeth in GT1 action. Others from the iRacing IndyCar Series and from other GT Series as well as are looking to go racing at this track. And here's a look then from up above. You can see the skies are setting here at Circuit Spa Franco Champs. And we're now just 10 seconds away from the checkered flag being out. And then we'll run you through your starting grid for tonight's event. So, now we can see. Timer has expired. Practice is over. Let's get ourselves then down to your starting grid for 45 minutes worth of racing. We're going to run you through your starting grid as quickly as we can get it up for you, which you should be able to do in the next couple of seconds time. And now we have the opportunity then to run through your starting grid for tonight's event, we think. In fact, no, we can't, unfortunately. A um, little bit of a technical glitch. Now we should be able to show it to you. As you can see there, Jürgen Frank from Club Diac will be starting this race on pole position. Then Joris Thielen alongside him on that front row of the grid. Gregor Hutu in third and Simon Trendell in P number four. There you'll see then the rest of your qualifying times up on your screen. Notice, of course, Gregor Hutu from the Irishing World Championship Grand Prix Series. We've got a couple of races from Club Benelux running here today. We've got some American drivers. We've got some British drivers, some Finnish drivers all taking part in tonight's event and well it's a pretty stacked field here we actually have ourselves 43 drivers who are looking as though they're going to take part in this event this evening jimmy looks as though we've got ourselves a nice field for a fantastic evening's worth of racing and of course later on we've got ourselves Kia cup action as well yeah, it's brilliant to see the turnout of this event. So many uh, well-known names out there, including our own Hugo Luis, who's on the grid. I thought he was hanging up his wheel, but it's awesome to see him get involved in this event. And uh, I, I, I'm really looking forward to that first run down to uh, to Oruz when obviously we get the uh, the car coming to the pits and we get the uh, lights out. And that that that's when we're going to have the uh, explosion of noise from the Aston Martins and that glorious V8 from the uh, from the Corvette. So ah, I love this noise. <laughs> Well then, let's get yourselves a look at your field. There you can see them. They work themselves now behind the iRacing.com first safety car as we get ourselves ready to go racing here at Spa Franco Champs. We're going to ride on board them with the driver of Joris Thielen. We'll talk about him over the course of this event. Uh, crazy story, actually. He's one of the drivers who race, of course, here on iRacing, but his work actually puts him working within the airport at Brussels, which of course was hit yesterday. Let's then go down to racing and see a couple of last minute wiggles from the cars, trying to get some temperature behind the wheel of these two fantastic beats incarnate. You've got yourself the Aston Martin. You've got yourself the Corvette. They work themselves now down towards La Source. As soon as they come out of this corner, we are gonna see some engines Revving. Let's get this show on the road. 45 minutes at bar starts now. Look at that jump there from Jürgen Frank. He came right off the source knowing exactly what he was doing. His mirrors hit the apex, planted the throttle, and has already uh, carried out about a second or so gap in front of Joris Thielen, who's behind him, and Simon Trendell, who's currently third. Interesting to see that Gregor Hill didn't actually make the start, so we're missing him from the grid at the moment. Yeah, as we'll see, a little bit of closed racing already. We're on board with the driver of ETH in the number 40 machine. He has got himself Simon Trendell on the right-hand side. Too wide, then they'll work themselves through Lacoum on the first lap of this event. You'll notice a little bit of too wide action going on behind Austin Aspetee there in the number 60 machine, where the Ricky Dorita in the number 23 machine as well. Important, we've got one car that's just gone off track, but he has now been able to bring it back on. That was Austin Aspetee and the number 76 machine as well of Jan Marshall. We've got a bit of trouble there down at Ravage, but everyone's going to work themselves through without too much issue here on the opening lap of the race. Sure, Hamilton and Ian Murray, but they are your early lap victims, but still, fantastic battle. We've got a car off there, number 76 machine again um, at the start of this event, losing all forms of position in that number 76 machine there. Yeah, very clean up until then. I'm not quite sure what happened to that 76. Have a quick look back and see what's happened to him. Just a couple of issues, I think, getting on and off track. But um, nice clean start to the race. Otherwise, obviously, the Spa is known for its uh, for its difficulty, and that's why it's so popular. But uh, everyone seems to have got through okay so far. So so far, so good. 
Yeah, there you can see you open Frank with a 1.3 second early advantage over your speed. And then you got yourself a margin, uh, Nigel Miney running himself in third. So I'm going to in fourth. We've got ourselves at number 40 machine of easily running in Pino. A fine, very close racing between some of these guys. So as they work themselves down towards the boss stop chicane for the first time in this event. A little bit of a lock up there for the car. Running in third position, Simon Trendell almost getting himself turned around. A bit of contact between himself and Eve as they work themselves out of the bus stop chicane and down towards La Source. We've got ourselves a tire turn around. That is Team Racing Hugo Louise actually involved in the incident as well. There we can see Hugo Louise in that number 15, Kalani Swim Sports car, locking up. And there's an incident down at the bus stop chicane, lap number one. It's a shame there for Hugo, he was definitely one to watch for, from our point of view, a very fast driver starting somewhat out of position. Uh, now seems to be getting back up to speed, but that car... Uh, ...that's Hugo out. Yeah, let's have a look then, see what happened to Hugo Louise. I think the incident started ahead of him, yeah. Number 451 car was the first driver in that one, that was Tim Clayson. I uh, did notice that he was struggling, but you can see that Tim Clayson from that 451 machine was involved in that incident as well, and unfortunately they are both going to be classified as well down the field. There you can see Clayson, um, well, he's really damaged that car now. He's going to have to bring it on towards pit road. Down um, in your field, drivers are running, you've got yourself number 40. You've got a lot of smoke there being locked up in towards the barge in this second half of this event. We've got ourselves at Oli Pakala, he's moving himself up into that fifth position on track. Yeah, that was uh, Nigel Monif there who had the uh, the big lockup going through Rivage. Uh, Simon Trendell was all over him at the start of all that, but seemed to uh, seemed that Nigel has the legs so over the middle sector. And this is a circuit uh, that's very much based on uh, on downforce, whether you have it high or low. If you have low downforce, you're going to be super quick in the first and last sector. But if you have high downforce or uh, a setup that suits corner cornering more than top speed, you're going to be super fast through the middle sector. And, that, and that's where you can see people call rubber banding and obviously having the massive toe as well up the straight. That's why Spa is a fantastic track. Doesn't hit there in the number 30 machine works himself um, on the exit of Stavolo 2 now it's that long long straightaway that aims you up at the bus stop chicane actually one of the two slowest points on the race truck the other naturally being a lap of air because you pull down to just 30 miles an hour down the rear of your field you've got some good straps going on right now the most colorful car in the field here today i would have to say is um, that number 360 car of Peter um, Vostrel from Central Eastern Europe. I uh, have to say, fantastic delivery on that machine as fast enough to race. Well, that is set by Joris Thielen so far. And he's running in second. He's actually had a much better second lap compared to his third one there. Yeah, in terms of time, he took seven tenths out of Jürgen there, and that is a fantastic amount to take out over this, uh, of course, in this part of the race, obviously. Don't want to let Jürgen get away at this point. Both drivers, um, sorry, one driver in a Corvette and one in Aston, so we've got a proper Brit versus America battle here. I really hope we see it uh, become more than just uh, two, light, two cars by the stern. Yeah, uh, we'll just have a look back. You've got yourself um, Xavier Sanchez versus Gustav Ruiz right now. Having a look from the rear of the driver of Xavier Sanchez in the Ibirica car. He's got himself the Diaz machine just behind him, the treble seven car. And well, uh, Weeds just pulled himself to the inside line about two, three seconds too early. Cost himself to draft and as a consequence, not going to be able to battle for position in that one for now. But P678, that one continues to battle on and a lot of smoke keeps on getting kicked up there. At Ravage, it is an off-camber, slightly banked corner. Marnif, actually, and Simon Trendell's turned around on the exit of No Name Corner as well. Joris Thielen um, has had himself an incident, um, and Thielen now, of course, is up to P2. He just hits the wall there. That's really going to be the end of his event now. What a shame for Joris Thielen in that machine. Let's get ourselves a second look at that one. So easy to do out of a no-name corner. It's, uh, you always try and take as much of the outside line as possible just to carry as much speed as you can. And it's very easy to put wheel across and double and same that story, just going around Stevel 01. Um, down the outside, Oli Pak uh, uh, the car, sorry, for the lead. He's just gone around the outside of the Aston Martin of Jürgen Frank. Wow. No, sorry. P2. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's Nigel Manif, sorry, apologies. Yeah. No worries, but of course, um, Jürgen Frank's now got a 3.9 second advantage. He is balancing the way out front, but Oli Pakala moves himself up into second place. He's charging, of course. He's one of those drivers that run 
in the RAC World Championship Grand Prix Series. Nigel Manif looking to try and come back in towards the bottom of chicane. There are six cars right now, pretty much nose to tail. These guys are literally going at a hammer and tongue on the exit then of the bus stop. There's the last of these drivers in line. It's Dustin Hinkman. He, he's running himself in P number seven, but this battle from P2 down to P6, absolutely fantastic stuff. Although Marnie keeps on lighting up those tires. It's not going to want to be doing that. It's just a 45 minute race. So those tires will go off. You want to try and uh, keep them alive for as long as you can. Like I said, this is a super close battle. Any of these people at the moment uh, are in uh, contention for second place. Ali Pakala, he's leading the pack. And he um, and the larger Mar Marnie behind him in third place. He's in the lone Corvette in this fight. So interesting to see the Aston dominance here. Yeah, as here comes Nigel Manif then on the outside as will head himself down into La Cume for um, this is the fourth time in this event. Manif on the outside will be able to cross under. He should have the racing line into the next corner. It looks as though he's going to try and squeeze that car. Well, Pacala down. Pacala with a wiggle. And that forces Pacala into the wall there. He got himself a tap, but Pacala really started there. Having himself his incident as a consequence. Only Pacala losing a ton of places right now. A shame just try getting on the power too early. It was fantastic side by side racing, both drivers keeping it clean from what I could see on my end there. It's such a shame that I think Ollie got a little bit too uh, excitable there, got on the front a bit too early. Uh, the car got away from me, tried to correct it, but he gripped and went back into the wall, and that's uh, pretty much his race over, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a second look at that one then. He lost it, and they can see the Team Chimera car of Simon Trendell just tapped him behind. Nothing really that Trendell can do, but then Ollie Packer, you can see, just locking up, grazing the front of that car against the tyre barrier, and as a consequence, well, he's lost himself a... About 15 positions. He's down in 19th place right now. That means Jamie Wilson is up into fourth place in that club. UK and Ireland team. Two Chimera cars running themselves right now inside of your top five. Austin Espetee versus Christian Derrida right now. We're on board with Austin Espetee in that. Uh, actually, we're on board with Christian Derrida who is trying to catch in turn Michael and Gina Nielsen. And this is about to be 11, 12, 13 on track right now. Fantastic scrapping going on down in your mid back. This is one of the fantastic things about Spa. You have uh, these long straights uh, and these different sectors we mentioned earlier. It just brings the cars together. It means you also have some form of close racing here as uh, Dorita has a little bit of, look, uh, of a look at the... Uh, at the quite uh, make anything of it at the moment. But don't go too deep into the bus stop. So easy to lock the tyres there and go into the back of the car in front of you. Let's have a look then at your biggest movers in this event so far here today. As you'll notice, now, inside your top 10, Weeds is your biggest mover as it stands right now. There you can see a Weeds in at that number 777 machine. And uh, he's got himself Xavier Sanchez. 1.1 second back from him as they work themselves through their rooms, through Radio once again. In fact, let's go on board now with the driver of Xavier Sanchez. And we'll just try and show you the speed there. He's not really going to get the full impact of the draft just yet. But he has gained about 4 miles an hour in the tow. And what that does, well, it closes that gap down by four tenths of a second pretty much immediately. Hearing that engine sing is always fantastic. I was very fortunate to see one of these cars in real life, and it sounds just as good in the game as it does in real life, although a little bit more piercing in real life. But uh, uh, as you see, uh, Aston's line of stern with Sanchez going now into Ravage. You see how the drivers try and take a, as tight a line as possible through there. What you don't really see from our cameras is the camber of Ravage. It's off camber, very easy to get the, uh, the, the front tyre locked up and the braking, very easy to go wide, if you're a little bit too impatient with that throttle. Yeah, doxed out there in the number 62 machine, losing that car at the worst possible moment. That is on the exit up the hill, just catching a white line, slamming it against the wall, losing the engine, and then having to hope that no one hits him in the process. Well, actually, there was another car that was pretty much going zero speed on the right-hand side as he entered um, Air Rouge. And, well, one of the fastest points on this entire racetrack, unfortunately, a couple of drivers there losing out for the time being. Let's go back, though, to the action. And we can see right now that this 4-5 car battle still continues in your front pack. Behind, we've got ourselves now Sanchez right in the rear of the treble seven machine as they work themselves through Blanchemont down towards the bus, Dr. Kane, Sanchez, trying to move himself up another position, over Weeds, who had a fantastic start to this event, looks as though that Sanchez just had to get out the gas into Blanchemont, and that cost him the opportunity to make a pass, although Weeds will go off, that will give Sanchez a position, because Weeds is going to have to slow down, and give some time back, and well, for Weeds, you'll see that he's going to lose himself, realistically, about three positions here, he's going to try and be careful, 
the way he has to give that time back. But we really should allow Sanchez to go past in terms of that time loss. But actually, it looks like he might have got away with that. I mean, in terms of just racecraft, it would have been good for him to let, uh, let Sanchez pass. He did miss the corner effectively, but uh, obviously he's, he's uh, served his penalty. Otherwise, he won't be back on the throttle again. And now we're back under racing. I don't think it'll be too long before Sanchez gets in the back of it. Especially with his draft now coming up to, uh, at the Kemmel Straight. Not going to quite be close enough, I don't think, into the Coon, but he is gaining. You can see visibly the draft just how much quicker Sanchez is there in a the straight line. Yeah, as um, just behind, we'll have a look behind the trees, we'll see. There's three cars now separated by just one second behind. Still some nice scraps going on as well. This is down um, the rear in your top 15. You've got one Antonio Barba Bermudez in the triple one car. As you can see, he is trying to catch the rear of Dave Jansen right now. Scrap for 14th place on track. There's the top 15 then on the left hand side of your screen. We've got a car turned around and that is the car of Dave Jansen in the number 909 machine. Just going to reverse it out of the way. And Revaz is going to try and find a way of getting this car back onto track. He's going to do so now. But he's going to lose himself about 20 seconds. In the consequence, Jansen now down in 18th place in field. As Simon Trendell versus Nigel Wani. This one has really picked up. And on the exit of Stavano number one, Trendell is really going to, going to try and use that draft advantage on the run down towards the bus stop so important to get a good run out of the Stavolo. It sets you up for the entirety of this uphill section here. You can't see it's actually quite steep up here. And going up through Bronchemont, uh, recently a gear down in DT cars and throw it to the apex. You can see how close Jamie Wilson is getting as well. This is a freeway battle of a second. Don't you uh, forget it for a second. And now breaking hard down to the bus stop. Not going to be close enough. Look how close Wilson's getting behind there. Maybe a little bit of a tap on the back of the Corvette by Trendle. No, everyone keeping it clean, but this is <laughs> so close at the moment. Right, you've also got yourself um, Xavier Sanchez and Wheat going side by side. Once again, three drivers still separated by absolutely nothing as they work. So I'm going to work on board from the rear of Christopher Wheat's car. Uh, if you've got a slow car, that's Babudez there. He's just lost it. That is down at the bus stop. He came to the bus stop, proving to be a corner, which is taking quite a few drivers out of contention here today. Let's ride on board the Treble One machine of Juan Antonio Barba Bermudez. It's a name so long, it almost breaks our overlay, Jimmy. <laughs> you know, you get unfortunate thing about happening every now. I know that feeling. He was actually the one involved in the incident with the 909 car, Dave Jensen, at, um, at uh, Abravage. He actually hit him on the way past. So that uh, incident might be a result of damage. Yeah, you can just see the back end stepping out on that one. Uh, it's a very slow, very clumsy spin, actually. But he does get going once again. Sanchez versus Weeks once again in towards Lacoum. Nothing. Sanchez inside the top 10, but not able to move any further forward just yet. We have got ourselves a couple of people out of this event. Oli Pampina, unfortunately, is going to be classified as out. Gregor Hutu in the number 35 machine. I will say, what a mark of respect there by Mr. Five-Time Champion with um, the number 35 machine dressed up in the Belgian flag colours. And actually, it kind of reminds you, similar to what Ferrari and a couple of teams did at the US Grand Prix, in 2001, a very nice, poignant mark of respect there by Mr. Five-Time, Gregor Hutu. It's always nice to see the drivers taking this obviously as seriously as we do. Um, these events mean a lot to uh, to us and to the iRacing community, I'm sure. We won't go into that in too much detail now. But uh, it, to see all the liveries out there and see the amount of people drive, uh, taking part and driving this event is always uh, it's, it's staggering, really. And it's, uh, it's actually quite emotional. On board with Christopher Weech, you just saw it back end of a spin by him so he was banning it out of course from Xavier Sanchez that is no longer the case because Wheat has spun in that treble seven Deutsche Post the car as they work themselves then down in towards um Fong is chicane and it looks as though that Wheat is going to lose it ah uh, does he just yeah he just clips there one of the um medium high curves a bit too much and that treble seven machine turned around shame for him because actually he was a good um, share of air time battling it out for that 10th spot. The, the, the fight for second is still still going strong at the moment. We had uh, Jamie Wilson challenging Simon Trendell for third. They were so close going in the bus stop. Dean Wilson had a look around the outside, couldn't quite make it stick around there. Actually ended up backing up the 40 car and Dustin, uh, Dustin Hickman there in the 30 car nearly managed to actually get past, but uh, now Dustin is right on the back of his 40 car coming up the Kemmel Strait. We might see a passing attempt here. We're in the slipstream, stream, deep in the slipstream stream now. Getting up to 170 miles an hour. Will we hit the brakes? There we do. We hit them early. I don't think we're having a go at them just yet. But uh, Dustin looking very fighty back there. 
We have got ourselves a number of cars. We've just seen them there working south through this majestic section of race truck that run down. We've got side by side here. Uh, Michael G. Nelson no, is going to stay in line just for the moment. But let's then have a look um, at Jurgen Frank. He currently leads the way in this mode event by six seconds last time by. He was actually slower though than Nigel Marneef. So it seems to be that Marneef is starting to slowly catch up now in that scrap. So it's a fantastic look at some of these guys work themselves through Puma on such a difficult corner on this track. Who is one of those corners that really frustrates you as a driver, but when you get it right, it's a, it's the sweetest feeling. It's a, almost a double apex. You turn in blind almost and try and hope that you uh, end up just clipping the curve on the outside. You take maximum speed out the corner. Obviously, it depends what sort of car you're in. In these sort of cars, a little bit of downforce, a lot of mechanical grip. But be careful on that throttle because even at fifth gear, uh, even at full fifth gear, you can end up getting the um, the rear of the car a little bit loose, and you can have big crashes there if you aren't careful. Well, let's then uh, turn our attention back to um, the driver of Nigel Juanith. He's going to work himself now down towards the bus stop chicane. There's a look from the rear as he's got himself Simon Trendell half a second behind him. Then Jamie Wilson a further half a second back as well. Let's give you then a little bit. Oh, a very close there between Juanith and Simon Trendell. Let's give yourself then a lap of Racebot TV fan immersion. We're going to ride on board. In this battle for P2, 3 and 4, let's experience some of these fantastic engine noises for these guys as they continue to scrap it out. what Jimmy we're gonna have to get ourselves another replay of this this is on board with Simon Trendell up the hill this is crazy yeah I was watching that and I gasped out loud when that happened he just got a little bit loose in the curve as so many people do and when he, he pended them back and forth I have no idea how he kept that car going in a straight line I mean the reality is that he is now down into I think it's fifth position now um, but uh, he's the car's still rolling he's still going which is which is the important thing but well done Simon yeah, we've got um, Austin Aspertee in that number 60 New England car. It's going to potentially, yep, that's his white not to do. You can see so many people catching that curve on the exit of Rad Hill. And well, Austin Aspertee does that. What um, wrong what Simon Trendell did right being able to control that car on board then with the number 40 machine off ETH as he's going to work himself side by side here. And this is with Simon Trendell battle for fourth place right now as they head themselves to Woolwich Blossom. Well, let's listen in again. machine forces his way through look at the Deutsche Post car coming out of nowhere that's a number 30 machine of Hickman is he gonna be able to hold it oh my word what a pass there by Dustin Hickman in that 30 machine I think Dustin just went into the braking zone there with both feet on the brake I have no idea how he slowed that down went around the outside there of Simon Trendell and just got it around in time to come back on the inside now Simon coming back at him after the sort they're side by side coming down the hill now Rom's going to have to lift at some point because uh, Overwatch is not a too wide corner. Looks like Simon has the uh, momentum going down the hill. Yep, Dustin gets out of it and uh, he just slots in behind Simon. Now he'll carry the uh, the slipstream up the hill and maybe have another chance into Lokoon, but uh, position is changing all the time. Yeah, and this is fantastic scrap going on then. Still remaining inside your top 10. Behind you have got yourself some good little scraps going on. We're going to show you some of those. Now you're going to work yourself down to your field. This is... Um, Patrick Young versus Francisco Padinez Ruiz. Two drivers separated by less than half a second right now. We're having a look from the rear of Patrick Young. That is Ruiz right behind him as they work themselves up the hill. I think Ruiz actually just lost that position recently to Young. And you can see that gap might come up a bit now on the exit of Radion between those two drivers as well. Yuri Yitok is now just 2.5 seconds ahead for Patrick Young as he tries to close up to the rear of him. 
getting some more gaps now. Part of the reason for this one, as we're going to look on board with Dave Jansen, is the fact that we are starting to get those marbles put onto this racetrack now. So this track is starting to get more slippery. The same way those tyres are starting to wear down. We're halfway through this event, Jimmy. Yeah, if, if, if your car isn't hooked up around here, then you're going to start suffering with uh, with understeer, possibly oversteer if your tyres are worn. And that's going to take you off the racing line. The racing line is the, uh, for those <laughs> not in the know, it's the line taken by the cars, the shortest possible line for the corner in most uh, in most times anyway, in most scenarios. And uh, off, off of that, the rubber build up, uh, the rubber cut, the road cannot hold any more rubber after a certain amount of laps. So uh, literally there's nowhere else for it to go. So the, the little marbles roll off the side of the course and then if you get onto that it's pretty much like hitting real life marbles you, you slip and slide so uh, uh drivers are really going to be trying to avoid that especially now as the race is uh, halfway done um let's then show you at the bottom of your screen your top eight as it stands right now jürgen frank leads this race by seven seconds over nigel Marnie. then you've got jamie wilson in third you've got Eve in the fourth position you've got simon trendell in fifth justin hickman runs himself in fifth um, sixth position, and Manny Chenoweth, you know, I actually talked about Chenoweth at all in this event. He runs himself in seventh, and then Wimstock can find out in the top eight. Let's go and show you then, Chenoweth in that number 50 machine, because he has got Stockman as it stands right now. 1.3 seconds back, and last time by, Chenoweth was just able to cut off a couple of seconds per second. It's good for Randy that he, he's actually anonymous in this case, but, uh, yeah, I've got to keep an eye on Mr. Stick, uh, Stockman's behind him. And as I look at the, so I look at the second place at the moment, Jimmy Wood. Of no, Jimmy is coming into uh, into Lake Hurt. Doesn't quite make it. He might be able to cut back now, coming down to Revolves. Will he be able to do it? No, he won't. But uh, Jimmy Wilson has really shown his pace in the last couple of laps. I think we might see him challenging for this position very soon. Yeah, well, look at the smoke. I wasn't coming up there for my knees car through Revage and well it just seems to be that that guy is just using the tyres too much but Wilson gets a much better run on the exit of Bruxelles now they'll come down in towards Pure once again not able to do anything although Marnie's going to go very wide if Wilson can get on the gas now he should have himself a good run into the final chicane but well it's pretty much single file through um, Pure on part two you have to follow the leader but Wilson if he actually just got onto the gas maybe half a second later he may well have been able to use that momentum to get himself past into Fangia, he's not able to do so. That battle will continue for the time being. Um, your biggest movers, actually you've got yourself a lot of drivers up three places inside your top 10. Simon Trendell is the only driver to have lost a position inside of your top 10 as it stands right now. But then there's some fantastic battles. Look at that, Whittle up 22 places, Young up 25 places in this event. Whittle has done a fantastic job in this event so far, Jimmy. Well, it's just uh, fast people starting at the back, but that, that, that doesn't mean that they are any less uh, skilled than those at the front in this case, especially with uh, Whittock and Young coming through the field, uh, avoiding the uh, the slower drivers in this case. And at this moment, Whittock is, is catching up to a uh, Kevin Adam in front of him at the moment, who had a big lock-up just coming into Stavolo 1, now going very wide to Stavolo 2 as we come up the hill now. And I'm looking at the lap times here, and it does look like uh, Whittock is about, at the moment, half a second a lap faster than Kevin Adams. So, in about a lap time, we're going to see these guys having a fight, I think, for that position. For those of you wondering about Hooter, Hooter's actually on pit row. Hooter looks as though he's going to be out of this event. Has Hooter made a mistake somewhere that we're not aware of here, Jim? We need to rewind the tape and see if we can figure anything out by here. Well, I'll get on that. I can see a big tent in the back of his car, so it looks like it's been involved in an incident somewhere, but uh, my guess is as good as yours. It's <laughs> pretty well, unfortunately. Well, let's try and figure it out there. We'll try and get ourselves a look at this one. It's going to be hard for us to find out exactly what happened to him. Um, but, well, we um, are going to try and get ourselves a look down and couple of battles going on towards the rear field as well. Pedro Jose Rodriguez versus David Saranzo. That one continues to go on on track as well. Um, unfortunately, we can't find the Hootsie replay. We'll try and find it later on. But here's Jory Whittock then, right in the rear of Kevin Adam as they work themselves down towards Lacombe one more time. As you'll just see there, there's a nice long shot. You can see Whittock on the outside in that Radicals machine. It looks like he's going to try and go around the outside. Not just yet, but the back end is going to slide out and Whittock's going to make that one easy for him. Kevin Adam's just losing grip down at Lacombe. Yeah, that's, uh, Ken Adams going a little bit too hot into the corner there. Now, obviously I'm a, I'm a racing driver at heart, so being overtaken is one of those things that we all hate, I'm sure. But in this situation, I think he would have seen that uh, Widget was catching him. Maybe it would have been a better idea just to sort of uh, let him pass and uh, lose as little time as possible. 
the situation is just about five six seconds and obviously uh, heat up the tire something fierce as well so not very uh, not very clever there from sir adam behind you've got yourself p16 p17 francesco cardenas ruiz versus dave jansen this year battle going on we have got ourselves um about 13 retirees so far we expected this in this event um these drivers haven't had too much time to prepare um, for this one but dave jansen we're on board with him on the run through the front which came down towards Stavolo number two. As then behind, you have got yourself more separation between drivers. Just back to it, um, sorry, well, that's Kevin Adam, that's his second into them. This lap is alone, he's gonna lose even more time. Well, situation there, Jimmy, is that so often you end up with drivers who will get themselves a little bit too much heat into the tires because they've overshot a corner. Then basically you've got to find a way of cooling those tires down. In this case, Couple of corners too hot in a row for Kevin Adam. It looks as though he's got a bin it down at Stavolo. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that is the case, unfortunately. And uh, you get the tyres hot, um, and you basically you need to just give yourself a lap, I think, like a lap or so of driving at maybe about 90%. Come down from come down from 98%. Go down to 90%. Chill out a bit. Otherwise, you're going to end up in these lower speed corners that require uh, more mechanical and more tyre grip. You're going to end up suffering. That's exactly what happened there to Kevin. Let's then just cycle yourself back forward. No, we're going to stay on board now with Wittuk in that number 84 machine. He's climbing up the hill. His next victim is Christoph Wiet in that car. He's going to get himself a fantastic run as you've got a wide on board then with Yuri Wittuk down towards Lakum. He will come and it looks like that could be two drivers in two laps for Yuri Wittuk. He'll go to the outside once again. That treble seven machine will have the inside line side by side. They will come. Wittuk is going to have to push a little bit harder. Not going to be able to make the pass work this time, but he's going to stay on the outside on the run down into Revanche. Has to stay in line for the time being. Looks at the right hand side. No, not just yet. Although very early on to the brakes was that trouble seven machine of Christoph Wheaton. Now Wittuk will just have to wait in line for the time being so he doesn't get two in two laps. Christoph is doing a very good job on defensive driving there. Just placing his car in a an area of the track which says, you know, I'm going to make this difficult for you, I'm not going to let you pass. And it isn't, he isn't compromising his line, his line too much. Saying that, he breaks very late going into pool and nearly actually goes wide there. But as a result, a Wittick has to get off the throttle and is not in a position now to challenge going into the Fanny Chicane. Although he has a look anyway, he's just showing his nose. He's just he's just saying, you know, I'm here, look out for me. Just trying to distract him. The other driver will be looking in his mirrors and that, you know, that, that might cause you to uh, miss a braking point or get on the front a little bit too early. Distraction is, uh, you know, half the battle, I think, in racing. Yeah, and uh, he's going to get himself a bad run, actually, out of Stavolo. So he's going to have to check up a little bit. He will get the draft into one block from all. There you'll see that gap comes down very quickly here. We've not got too much wind here, so the draft isn't as prevalent as you sometimes see as well, but he will close that gap down. Would he try and go down to the inside? No, he waits in line. And that's what we've seen so often here. These guys getting that run early, having to check up. Actually, if you can follow the car, close through Blanchemont it makes it easier for you to then make the pass into the bus stop chicane that was what um, Wittuk wasn't able to do we're going to turn our attention back then towards the front of your field we've got ourselves Marneve we've got ourselves Jamie Wilson a Corvette versus an Aston and well the Corvette brute force will hold on just for a moment there but Wilson putting the pressure on as they work themselves now on the exit of the boom down towards the bars we're on board with Jamie Wilson thundering sound of the core in front of us you see right see the cloud of smoke again from Marnie's tire and that's going to be all up in Jamie's, uh, Jamie's vision that's going to affect him through Rivage and now again getting close you see nearly every corner Nigel's locking up a tire that's not going to be that's not big of a tool for his tires towards the end of the race so Jamie has to look up the inside going oh to pull this is traditionally an overtaking spot very nearly touches the back look how close these guys are now no contact absolute fantastic racing between the two still going second and third you know what happened though the inside line he had to check up so much he couldn't carry on momentum on the exit or pure if you are going to try and overtake that you can do so what you need to do though is you need to hold the outside line although wilson, wilson White. is going to go wide and he's going to lose position they all bunch up behind him wilson loses the position he um, is going to move himself now up into third place in this event Whilst they're battling low, Jürgen Frank is now 10.2 seconds clear as they've got 15 minutes worth of racing to go. Yeah, Gunn's just done the, uh, the fantastic job of getting out in front and staying there. Nigel's had to always contend with Jamie Wilson, uh, you've got Aoife in the background as well, Dustin Hickman. He's always checking his mirrors and that is going to affect his lap times. He's going to, not going to be concentrating 100% on what's in front of him. And again, look how close at number 40 Aston Martin is to touching that Corvette, almost reaching out and touching the spoiler there going through the bus stop. 
Van Ganachen in the number 40 car then. Is he going to try and dive down to the inside? No, he's going to look to the high side. In towards La Source. And he's going to try. Oh, he bumps him off. Oh, my word. Van Ganeschen there. I say his name correctly for the first time in this event. And we have ourselves a free car pile up in turn number one. Thank you very much for saying that. Now I know, say, Van Ganeschen, there you go. Yeah, that, that was an issue there. He went in far too quick. Far, I think he got a little bit too confident. I uh, saw, saw, saw second place and thought, right, I can have this. You know, I can go after Jürgen Frank and just got the brakes out a little bit too late. I uh, actually ended up spinning Nigel uh, Marnif around as well. Jamie Wilson was the big winner there. He's now up into second place and he's uh, he's flying. Yeah, as we can just see there, we'll cycle that camera around. There you can see you have four or five drivers involved in that incident. You've got the two Team Camera cars. You've got the number 30 machine of Dustin Hickman having to go very high. Threading the needle actually does that number 86 machine. I'm going to actually try and get another look on board with him, Simon Trendell, because he was very lucky to get through that one without any major incident. But um, what that does mean is now Wilson's up into second place. Hickman in third, and then you've got Trendell in fourth. Marnif is down into P number five. Although Marnif is still close to the rear of Simon Trendell, he can try and close back up. I don't think there's too much damage to these cars. And again, like in the GT3 machines, if you hit them front on, it's actually um, not that bad. It's if you get side impact that you really damage the suspension. And Trendell does just touch the front of Nigel Marnif's car, but it was so slow speed, I think they'll get away with that. Yeah, Manif was just sort of just sort of pushed round there. He 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 got away a bit okay. There's no uh, there's a little bit of visual damage to the back of that Corvette. Nothing too substantial though. It doesn't seem to be affecting his pace. I think we're going to see a little bit less reserve now from uh, from Manif. I think he's going to say right, okay, well, I guess from second place, red mist descends. <laughs> this is where we're going to get the interesting battles, I think. And yeah, Wim Stockman has had himself an issue. This is down at Puar. Does he end up losing that car to work himself behind the trees? Something has just happened to Wim Stockman, and well, it looks like it is actually going to be a mechanical issue for him, so he's going to be classified as out of the way. He's got a car all the way down on the grass, so that is Nigel Money, third car in line. Um, is that actually no, that wasn't Money, if I take that one back. And that was Dustin Hickman, that was all forms of off there. Um, no, I take that back again, it was a lap down car. Some of these cars have very similar paint schemes, so we do apologise for that. Top eight, bottom of your screen, 11 minutes, 35 seconds to go in this event, while well, Frank. 12.1 second advantage right now over Jamie Wilson. Hickman in third, Trent Down in fourth. Marnif does look as though that is a little bit damaged that car because he has lost ground now to the driver of Trent And in fact, Randy Chenoweth now runs himself in P number six. And Chenoweth, um, just having a look at his lap time, looking as though he is now starting to close up to the rear of Marnif. He might just about have enough time to catch him. Yeah, a couple of instances there, obviously handing out, um, helping Randy out quite a bit, get onto the back there of uh, Nigel. I'm not sure what sort of state Nigel's tyres are in. We've seen him locking up pretty much every uh, every tight corner. We've seen him go through Rivage, the source. Every time we go through there, we see smoke pouring off those front tyres. So it may be now that his tyres are starting to go off, starting to go the other way. And this is where those people who are a little bit kinder to their, their tyres are going to start coming forward, get that late surge of speed. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, after this event, we bring you our normal coverage of RaceBot Primetime. It will be the Kia Cup for the second round of their championship. It will be live. Johnny Simone will be on the call with me for that one. And basically what I do, Jimmy, is I replace Jimmy with a Johnny and I carry on. <laughs> well, there you go. As long as it works for you, as long as it works. Yeah, as we get it. Let's go in then. Spend a couple of corners on board with Dustin Hickman in that number 30 machine. Now, talk us to the back end of this racetrack. We are coming through this latter part of the Fanny Chicane now. We have in front of us Jimmy Wilson. He is our target coming up to the first pile of Stavolo. We've got Stavolo 1 and Stavolo 2. We turn in. You want to go just to the outside a little bit, not too far over to the left, because there's not as much traction there as you think there is. This is also almost a bit of a blind corner turning into the last part of Stavolo. Now, just let the horsepower run away from you. Uh, you, know, you get up to about 165, 170 mile an hour on these machines coming up here. Coming up towards Blanchemont, the fastest corner on the track. It's just a down the gear usually, not even down the gear of these guys. Chuck the car to the left, hope you stick, uh, accelerate out of the corner, now to the bus stop, spot your braking zone on the left, now heavy on the brakes, down through the gears, try and almost aim for that little red uh, rumble strip on the inside and outside the corners, and then again let the car nice and soft on the front on the way out, and that brings you up to the start finish line. As he will work himself past the stripe once again. We have got USP now here in the Racebot TV booth, and well, first of all, Uris. Unfortunately, Dave, you're not going to be classified in the final results, but more importantly, um, of course, you talked to me yesterday, um, crazy circumstances, of course, yesterday in Belgium, of course, a company that you worked for, very lucky that none of you, you or your colleagues ended up being involved in the tragedies of yesterday. 
Yeah, we were very lucky. Um, just so the, the others know, um, I work with the, the Belgian ATCs for air traffic control. Um, and I do the maintenance of some surveillance uh, equipment there. So we have some equipment in that building, on top of the building. And usually we go there every once a week to to do our checks or just to do some maintenance. And we also we always have some some people running around there because we also have some some other equipment there, of course. And uh, we were planned to go there for our maintenance that day. And luckily, it was that they those guys came in very soon on the day, and um, yeah, we were in there sooner or, or later. So yeah. Well, um, of course, I know that this event means a lot to you and a number of your fellow um, Ben Lux iRacers. Um, talk us through the incident, though, that put you out of this event. Yeah, I, I was just missing concentration. I was I didn't, I'm, I didn't really practice for this. I think nobody did, but uh, uh, I didn't get enough practice laps. And, and um, yeah, just lost it on the entry. The, the, the car overturned and I couldn't correct it. Before we let you go, as all Chenoff and Van Gennesen, they are pretty much bumping there on the exit of Stavolo number two. Well, talk us through, and um, before we let you go, Joris, anyone you want to give a shout out to? To Randy, that he gains some, some more spots there. And uh, maybe I want, I want to thank all the, the people who helped uh, yesterday, also who supports us. Um, it's not an easy time here, but. Uh, of course, also to raise spots for supporting this. Uh, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much for joining us here on Racebot TV and also on iRacing Live as well. Um, let's then continue looking at this battle with Randy Chenoff um, and Ethan Vanganesham. And Chenoff, that uh, last time by, looked as though he was very slow on the run through um, the final chicane. That allowed Vanganesham to really close up, down to six minutes to go in this event and this battle is mighty, mighty close. Although, Chenoff has been able to gain a bit of time there. Van Ganeschen has lost himself a second since the boss stop chicane. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I think he had a little bit of a bad run just coming out which came maybe hit one of the curves on the outside. Very easy to do in these cars or any of the cars when they're racing. But uh, I think Van Ganeschen is the faster car at the moment. Uh, Randy's sort of in there as a result of um, as an, of number four of his car's issues so far. But uh, it's going, to, it's going to mean we're going to get a good fight at the end. Obviously, uh, no, no, no bias, of course, towards Randy here. So uh, all I want to do is see a fight. So I'm hoping he, ca he catches him again. Let's have a look down towards the rear of your field a little bit. You've got yourself Jan Moran there in the number 21 machine. You've got yourself Jose Ramon Valerias in the double O machine there. They're scoping out for P23 right now. Although Jan Moran last time by two seconds faster than Valerias. So looks like we could have ourselves a nice little battle developing there towards the rear part of your field as well. Battles everywhere and battles all the time. It's, it's the, the beauty of uh, these sort of races and these sort of tracks. Big long track is spa. I mean, you're looking at lap times uh, two, two minutes 13, two minutes 12 for the fastest time around. I didn't see a 211 actually from our leader. Um, but w w with that sort of track length, it means that uh, those who have issues and those who uh, maybe are out of position at the start of the race come through the grid and come through the field. It means we get treated to uh, fantastic door to door racing. So. Oh, Look at that! He's lost that number 50 machine. So we talk about him a moment ago, and he's had himself an incident. I think that is down into Stavolo. He's had that incident down at Stavolo number one. It was a horrible angle that we could see it from, but we're riding on board of him right now. Yeah, he was good for the fun as he came, and it just looks as though in towards Stavolo, Chenoff's lock ran out in that number 50 machine, and it's the second time, actually, we've seen drivers lose it on the entry into Stavolo. It's very easy to do, because you actually work yourself through a portion of the racetrack right behind, where you're really heating up those tyres, and while Chenoff, unfortunately, has now just lost himself a bit more time, and he's fallen down into P number 9. It might also have been a, a, a brake bias thing, or maybe something to do with the downshifting in these cars. If you downshift too quickly, you can quite easily just for a, for a split second lock those rear tyres, and it doesn't mean the rear tends to come around. Uh, Randy, I imagine, is probably at this point just uh, adjusting his brake bias in the cockpit, trying to get something a little bit more simple, maybe moving it forward a couple of clicks. Uh, a little bit too late now, but it's good to try and prevent a further incident. Four minutes worth of racing to go here. We're looking to get ourselves two laps after this one according to our timing and scoring. Don't forget live timing and scoring for those of you who are after it is available on Facebook.tv forward slash timing. 
we failed to leave a bit in the day. We do apologise for that one. Um, social media, we'll talk about that in like a couple of moments as well. But Dane, you've got Peter Vostel right now. Seven tenths per second is the gap between himself and Dave Jansen. This is a P15 between Central Eastern Europe machine and the number 909 car, the Benelux car of Dave Jansen coming through the uh, bus stop now and it looks like he's coming into the pits um that's interesting dave uh, maybe have some sort of issue there Yo. it might be fuel uh, he may have underfilled it unfortunately and have to come do a bit of a splash and dash which will just completely ruin his chances of his uh his fright there but uh you gotta do it you gotta do it exit of stavolo for dustin hickman we can see how much he catches up to the rear of jamie wilson he's now got himself two laps to get this Cars complete. Of course, this was at one point a six car battle. We had ourselves that incident down at La Source about two laps ago, which has really spread this one out dramatically in this event. But Wilson versus Dustin Hickman right now. Half a second down into the bus stop she came and we're on board with Hickman in that Deutsche Poster car as he works himself out the bus stop and that wiggle on the exit. It's going to cost him about two tenths of a second, but more importantly, that will cost him momentum. This is it. Hitman now can sort of see. There's no blood in the water. You can see that he's catching Jamie Wilson. And just sitting on that front a little bit too early, getting a little bit too eager. Now it's the time to be calm. Make sure we get up to the back of that 87 car in front of him. And find a good place on the track to uh, maybe sit through and pass. The end of the Kemble Straight here is the most popular place for that uh, that sort of manoeuvre. You see how much quicker actually Dustin is through uh, uh, Rouge. He's a lot quicker through there. He's not going to be close enough to make a move. But that's where his speed is. I think that Jamie's having trouble with the tyres. Yeah, I, I, it's that whole thing. I think with um, the marble starting to develop on this track and the fact that some of these guys now are struggling a bit more for grip, Hickman got that gap down to four tenths of a second. Not much that he's going to really be able to do um, as far as it stands right now. We have a couple of battles then still going on. Wim Stockman versus Jean Michel Garnier. Um, this is the scrap for P number 16 between a driver, the number 66 machine, Club Ben Locks there, Wim Stockman. And the Club France car of jean Michel Garnier as these guys separated by 1.3 seconds. Garnier actually has lost himself a bit of time in this battle, so it does look as though that P16 will belong to Wim Stockman unless anything happens in that battle. Other battles going on the track, looks though like it's all calmed down. Oli Pakala has come back out onto track, but he has scored five laps down, Jimmy, all the way down in P number 25. Still nice to see Oli come back on track and complete the race. That itself is, I think, a mark of respect, and uh, it's very good to see him do that. Even though he's not really competing now, still lapping around at the back is, uh, is is fantastic to see. Hickman, Wilson, they are gonna come to the white flag this time by. There's Shurkin Frank. This is the thing: when you're leading a race by 11 seconds, we don't often give you the airtime. Um, but Jurgen Frank has driven an absolutely dominant race here. He has led all 19 laps of this event so far. He will lead 21 laps out the line. White flag will be out this time by for that driver of Jurgen Frank behind. We've still got a score to settle between Jamie Wilson and Dustin Hickman as these two Deutsche Poster cars looking to try and potentially make it a 1-2. But again, the exit of the bus stops are came, not serving Dustin Hickman well. He just doesn't seem to have that traction out of a solid corner. So let's watch him through the source. This would be a good test. He comes through now nice and early on the uh, on the brakes. But there again, you see that Jimmy Wilson just seems to have the better traction coming out. Just seems to have to pick it up a little bit easier coming out of the corners. And to be honest, this is uh, Dustin's biggest chance here is coming through a rouge and coming up towards uh, the corner. Will he be able to make a move? But how fast is he? He's very fast again for rouge. Look at that speed difference. I think we might see an attempt here. He gets up in the six seam, still maybe a little bit too far back, but carrying his speed. Looking now to the inside. Now I think going to dive to the outside. He does very late. Around right the outside, Jamie Wilson. Will he make the move? Will he make it stick? Coming into the corner, late on the brakes. And fantastic move by Hickman. Past Jamie Wilson there into P2. Although Wilson's going to try and come back on the outside as they work themselves on the exit of Lacoon then down towards Rivage that will come in what's going to be the final lap of this motor race. It's side by side between Hickman and Wilson. Fantastic scrapping going on there. Neither of these drivers are going to give an inch to stay side by side as we go back and board of Hickman. We got ourselves then just half a lap of this event to go down in towards Puma they will come for the final time Jurgen Frank has got himself the advantage and well for Dustin Hickman it does look as though that unfortunately unless he gets himself a very good run on the exit of Stavolo 2 this one could be over for him let's turn our attention then back 
to a race leader. It's Jürgen Frank. He's going to work himself now on the exit of Stavolo 2 for the final time. He'll work himself in towards Brajimov for the final time. And that number 17 machine has had a fantastic evening's worth of racing here at Bar. We go on board of him as he comes down in towards the bus stop chicane for the final time. We are keeping an eye out on the battle behind it between Wilson and Hickman. It is close. It's closing up a little bit more. Out the final corner, Jürgen Frank will take victory behind. Will it be a last second pass for Dustin Hickman? He's looking to the outside. It's going to be a case of whether or not Wilson can hold on. We go on board as Hickman. It looks like Wilson will claim second place. Third <laughs> place will go towards Dustin Hickman. Behind, Simon Trindell will round out your top four. Then it's a bit of a way. And Eve Manganeshan, after having himself some woes in this event, will round out your top five, Jimmy. A fantastic end to a, uh, a somewhat somber race, but uh, it was still very uh, a lot of fun to, to commentate on. Jürgen Frank pretty much had that one, I think, coming out of T1, uh, out of the source in the first lap. He had such a gap going down the to Arouge and up to the, the Kemmel Strait that no one was near enough to even draft, and people behind him were fighting, and that... Uh, along with uh, obviously a fantastically consistent drive has just meant that he's he's walked away with this one so big congratulations to Jürgen well there you can see Rani Chinoff there completing his race in P number 8 let's get a look then some of the remaining guys working yourself towards the start finish line here is Yuri Wittuk then he's just going to complete his event in that radical steel series simulare machine he'll come home in the 10th position Francesco Ruiz will come home in P number 11 as we're just now waiting for the remainder of the drivers on the lead lap to do so. You can see Gary Moyak there in the number 71 machine will come home in 12th. Just waiting now for Pedro Rodriguez. He will round out your top 13 hits. So a little bit of smoke being kicked up there by him. And then you've got yourself Peter Vostrel. He is actually the last driver on the lead lap there. Go on board with him in that number 360 machine, final corner, and well, he will work himself out of the bus stop chicane, and he will claim 14th place in tonight's event. Let's give you a look then at your final race results, ladies and gentlemen, here from hashtag I race with Belgium at Turkey Spa. Jürgen Frank will claim victory here by just under 12 seconds from Jamie Wilson. Fantastic scrap at the end between Wilson and Hickman. However, Wilson's able to hold on. Hickman will settle for third. Simon Trendell in fourth. Eve Van Ganeschen in fifth. Xavier Sanchez, Michael Jean Wills, Nelson, Randy Chinnis, Christia Derrida, and Yuri Wittuk. They round out your top 10. The rest of your results coming up then on your screen right about now. And well, overall, Jimmy, we had ourselves some fantastic battles all the way through your field this evening. And I think the Aries and community, once again, showing how as a community, we can let the racing do the talking. Yeah, you're looking, looking on track now and watching Jürgen just leading around the cars in the nice slow lap, slow in lap there. No, another mark of respect for the... Um, the about and tragedy there and it's it's just fantastic to see these drivers come together and like you said at the start uh i racing is all about community and this is literally it you are watching it right now you're watching that embodiment and uh the respect is fantastic yeah as we can see that what a fantastic showing of respect by these drivers as they work themselves now down from stavolo number two get a look at this Well, there you can see them in formation. You've got yourself the four Deutsche Post cars that finish this event. You've got yourself the two King Chimera cars right there behind them as well. You've got yourself all the drivers that finish. You can see they're going four wide, the Deutsche Post cars showing their respect. Good number of them doing so here. And thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for everyone who's been a part of our coverage here tonight on Racebot TV. And as I said, at the top of this broadcast, the most important thing is is that here on iRacing, we are a community. We will always be a community. Yes, we compete against each other. We do so every single series that we race in. Be it the GT1, be it in open wheels, be it in oval racing, everything. Yes, we always compete every single year as well. Things like the World Cup of iRacing, but it's friendly competition. At the heart of it, we are one community. We're sim racers. And today, these guys, the embodiment of this iRacing community. 
Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being a part of our event here tonight. Don't forget, tweet your support using the hashtag I race with Belgium. Myself, Will Vincent, from Jimmy B. We'll talk to you all next time. Good night.